I hope that this is recorded. Thank you very much. And uh, first and foremost, uh, what is the Common Fund for Commodities? A few words about it. This organization may not be as widely known as other international finance institutions, but it is an international financial institution established on an intergovernmental basis under the auspices of the United Nations. Uh, the Common Fund for Commodities is small. It's headquartered in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, we do not have uh, regional offices, but we're certainly trying to maintain contact with all our projects around the globe. The Common Fund for Commodities uh, started its operations in 1989, so we have quite a bit of history behind us. Currently, the Common Fund for Commodities counts 101 member countries, plus a number of uh, international organizations who are considered to be our institutional members and with whom we maintain contact. A few numbers about the technical competence of the Common Fund for Commodities, so 30 plus years of project experience, over 400 projects uh, with the total cost financed over the years of uh, almost 800 million, will probably get above 800 million this year. A few words about the, uh, what they call the theory of change behind the Common Fund for Commodities. So what difference does the CFC expect to make in the world? And uh, how, uh, how do commodities uh, fit into this picture? Uh, in general terms, uh, the Common Fund is an impact investor targeting any issues that prevent the commodity sector from serving all the stakeholders in an equitable and just way. The slogan of the CFC is making commodities work for everyone. And uh, we understand that uh, dependence on commodities is the primary root of poverty for over 2 billion people worldwide who are producing things that everybody consumes, that we need on a daily basis. And yet those people producing those things do not get a chance to make a decent living out of, or out of the hard work, out of the resources that they do out of their contribution to the global economy. Naturally, in the current environment, the CDC also looks at the ways to uh, address the current uh, crisis, uh, the nutrition security, the uh, green recovery from the pandemic, use the most advanced tools, uh, digitize the commodity value chain where it's appropriate, uh, keep an eye on the gender dimension for sustainable development. And we certainly hope uh, to collaborate with as many productive actors in the commodity value chains as possible. So the, the broadest answer to the question, so what is it that we do, is the Common Fund is prepared to make an investment in the place in any commodity value chain uh, which prevents people in this value chain from deriving a fair share of income from the global trade, from their involvement in uh, production and trade of commodities. Uh, a few of the principles of CFC operations, additionality, partnership, and innovation, serve the uh, foundations of the CFC. That's the vision of the CFC is to strengthen and diversify our commodity sector in developing countries, transform it to make it major contributor to poverty alleviation, sustained economic growth, sustainable development. And we contribute to poverty alleviation by strengthening the income generating capacity of commodity producers and traders and mitigating the vulnerability to their economic well-being. So, uh, this uh, concludes the introductory part of, uh, of the webinar regarding the Common Fund for Commodities. 
And I would like to move uh, to the practical thing. So on the CFC website, you open it, you see the invitation, the CFC open call. You also see the application form. So I will uh, go through what the what, what's inside the open call and what's inside the application form. And we can uh, discuss so what needs to be there, what does not need to be there, uh, what kind of information we expect to be able to effectively process the request for financing uh, under the open call for proposals. So uh, once uh, you decide to apply under the open call, you will send your proposal to the CFC and a certain process will follow. In uh, a given year, we receive, uh, well, the numbers were very a bit, but let's say we receive uh, on the scale of 100 to 200 project proposals per year. And the first stage of consideration, I, I have to say the CFC secretariat, the CFC, the CFC headquarters, the, the people who process this is uh, 23 people. So we don't have that much manpower and we are implementing a, a process for consideration of project proposals that allows us to process these numbers and higher numbers, we hope, effectively uh, serving the right people and responding to the right questions. Uh, so stage one is internal screening by the CFC secretariat. Every project proposal that we receive will be read by somebody in the secretariat by a project manager, by one of the project managers. And the project manager will complete a quick screening uh, checklist, which basically responds to the questions uh, if the proposal is eligible to be considered by the CFC. Uh, each checklist will be reviewed by the chief operations officer, by uh, Mr. Nicholas Cromer. And uh, if the project manager and the chief operations officer agree that the proposal is worth to be considered. This proposal will be taken by first by the internal project appraisal committee, uh, preparing a submission for evaluation by an independent consultative committee formed by the Common Fund for Commodities. Uh, the consultative committee consists of nine experts appointed by member countries who are officially independent from the CFC secretariat, who serve in their personal capacity, and uh, they represent the, the real commodity sector. So these are people working in uh, different countries, uh, in different sectors, in different commodities on a daily basis, so they understand how commodity projects work. The consultative committee reviews the uh, proposed uh, the, the proposal submitted in the open call, and uh, it will meet to decide in summer which of the projects, which of the proposals we received so far, need to be uh, followed up. Which of the proposals can work, can deliver the results, can deliver improvements to uh, sustainable development in certain commodity value chains by addressing the particular weak places in those commodity value chains. After the consultative committee, we will notify those projects recommended for further consideration for submission to the executive board. We will provide the feedback. The consultative committee uh, hardly ever uh, recommends projects for subsequent consideration without any, uh, any in-depth comments on 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 uh, on the details uh, my apologies i had to mute my telephone sorry so uh that's the stage of feedback after the consultative committee uh in summer we will have a few months to come back to you ask you the question that the consultative committee asked us to clarify and if we receive uh, satisfactory answers to those questions. If those questions are answered in substance, we will prepare submission to the executive board in October this year, and the executive board will make the, will make the final decision on CFC commitments to finance the project. So 
in principle, we are, yeah, we are small, we are open. So during the whole process, we can come back to you with the questions. Also, you can write, you can send your questions to the general address, the open call at commonfund.org. And we are making a big effort to respond to every question in substance. So every question that we get there, somebody real like myself or my colleagues will respond in substance to the question, uh, are trying our best to make it, to make the submission easier and more transparent for you. So what does the project take to get through, or what, where do you need to, to look to understand if your project will make it through this process? Firstly, uh, do read the CFC objectives as stated in the open call. Uh, in the proposal, we need information about the track record. Basically, we need to be able to see from the proposal if the team behind the project has the necessary technical, managerial, and financial skill to make it a success, to deliver the results that are promised. Also, it helps enormously if the application is clearly written. Uh, please try to make it easy for the people who read the application form to understand what the project is about. Uh, sometimes it is difficult to get through generic and general words, which can be applied to any projects. And it helps a lot if we can see the specifics. So what is it that the project will do? What is it that the project will do differently? Why is it that the project will be successful? Well, that's uh, clear. So. Uh, Transparency of the financial projections also is requested. There is uh, on the CFC website, you can download the Excel uh, worksheets, the model, the financial models, uh, they need to be filled in. Uh, Nikolaus will tell you more about these later. And uh, any uh, projections, any assumptions, for example, we, the project assumes that it will uh, reach the level of 10% of cashew exports, exports from uh, Tanzania in five years. So this is an assumption. This is the basis for financial projection. This assumption needs to be clearly stated so we can analyze uh, the project sensitivity. We, uh, we need to be able to analyze how the project might respond to unexpected things, which we know all too well will happen uh, just about everywhere. Uh, I already started to mention about the calendar for the 20th open call for proposal. So all the applications we receive by close of business on 15 April will be considered under this open call. Whatever we receive after the 15 April will go to, will be considered under the next 21st open call. So you can simply approximate the same timeline, timeline by six months later. And uh, it's not a disaster if you don't meet 15 April, but of course, the sooner we get, uh, the sooner we get uh, the information, the, uh, the faster we can decide on financing. Okay, so uh, from 16 April to middle of May, uh, we will be screening the application. So this is the time when uh, project managers in the city will be reading the proposals. We may come back to you with questions already at this stage. Uh, by the end of May, we will make the decision which project go to the consultative committee. Uh, by the way, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not arbitrary by the secretariat. Again, at the screening stage, we check if the project meets all the requirements of the CFC to be eligible, to be seen by the consultative committee. But also, uh, just in case we make a mistake at this stage, the consultative committee gets to see the full list of proposals received by the CFC in each call for proposal. And the consultative committee members can request the documentation for any of the proposals, not just those passing the screening. So there is a second check on uh, the screening stage and the consultative committee can always call for any of the projects to be seen as well. Uh, so, uh, the, this year, uh, this summer, the consultative committee will meet from 27 June up to 30 June 2022. So typically it's end of June, beginning of July. 
Uh, due to uh, recent pandemic restrictions, uh, the consultative committee was meeting in cyberspace. This summer, uh, we are checking if the meeting will be in person in Amsterdam or if the meeting will have to take place in hybrid format or again in cyberspace. But uh, regardless, I think we have accumulated sufficient uh, knowledge to run uh, as well in cyberspace as we do in the person-to-person -person meetings. Shortly after 30th of June, those projects recommended by the consultative committee for consideration by the executive board will receive a message from the CFC informing them that they are progressing to the next stage and that the projects need to respond to some questions raised by the consultative committee. Something we called desktop due diligence will also take place at this stage, or already preparing the, docu the, the, pro the proposal for our substantive implementation. Uh, this will take us up to October, and in October, the executive board will make the final decision whether the project is to be financed by the CFC, whether the CFC can finance the project. We will uh, inform everybody, uh, all, all the projects uh, successfully passing the executive board, that uh, the CFC is prepared to finance them. We also ask for understanding that uh, we do not uh, contact the unsuccessful applications by default. But if you have a question, do write to our general uh, CFC address. In general, if you have no, not heard from the CFC in October 2022, that means that the application has not been successful. But you can always uh, write and ask the question to the open call address of the CFC. Uh, this takes us to the board approval. And I, uh, the, this is the last slide on the process. So what happens if you approve, if you receive approval from the executive board? Okay, approval from the executive board means that the CFC has committed certain amount of money to the project. And this amount will be ready for the project to uh, start operations. Uh, the project to, will have to meet the conditions specified by the executive board, and the project will have to conclude a legal agreement with the CFC, starting with the non-binding term sheets. We will, somebody from the CFC will come to the site of the project to conduct due diligence, so to check on the facts stated in the application form. We will discuss the uh, loan agreement for the project, and we will conclude the contract. The CFC expect that this should not take more than 12 months. We are working hard to make this period as quick as possible. But also we understand that some projects may need the time to collect the information, to uh, work out the details, and to respond to the questions posed by the CFC, posed by the executive board. Uh, the CFC will not keep its commitment to the project indefinitely. We, after 24 months of the executive board's approval, the common fund can withdraw the commitment to finance the project if there is no substantive progress towards implementation so that the money committed to the project may be better used by someone else in a different project context. This is also uh, something to be aware of. And we equally ask for your understanding and hope that, that uh, all projects that we take forward, that they all operationalize quickly. I see that the question, the question uh, yes, the presentation will be sent to the participants, everybody who are uh, registered for whom we have their email addresses. Uh, this will be available. <clears throat> so this concludes uh, the process. And I will uh, go without further ado into the application form. That should not take me much time before I pass the floor to my colleague for, substan for the substance of the project. So uh, now uh, this is all about the application form that you can download from the CFC website. Uh, first things first, if anybody asks you for fees at the application stage, this is not the CFC. The CFC does not charge any fees. Also, uh, 
we do expect complete and accurate information. We will check if the project is successful. We will check all the information at the due diligence stage. As I already mentioned, we will only engage in correspondence on uh, the projects recommended for approval uh, and approved by the executive board. <clears throat> we are simply uh, due to capacity constraints, we have to focus our attention and our time on the projects which are considered to be suitable for CFC financing. That means that we will not be able to engage in correspondence, for example, so what do we need to improve in our projects, in our project to reach CFC approval? We will not engage in the redesigning of projects to make them suitable for the CFC. Uh, there is a certain exclusion list for activities that the CFC is not allowed to finance. Please have a look on the CFC websites. Uh, some projects may contain confidential information that uh, you or uh, somebody would not like to be shared. We please make it clear in the proposal that the information is confidential. We will have to share the project information with the consultative committee and the executive board for the purpose of decision making. Uh, so if this is not suitable, then uh, we will not be able to process the application, but do please indicate any confidentiality constraints. And finally, the address to which uh, any questions and application forms can be submitted, open call at commonfund.org. So uh, section one of the application form. <clears throat> uh, another question in the chat box, a recording of this session. Uh, the recording will be on the CFC website. So uh, this will also be available. Now, section one uh, should be quite uh, straightforward regarding the organization profile. Uh, in principle, the CFC has no restrictions on the partner organization to work with. We can work with private companies, cooperatives, investment funds, NGOs, government organizations, as long as the proposal is sound and as long as the proposal can deliver real benefits to the primary beneficiary. Uh, who founded, who are the people behind uh, the organization? Uh, is, is it, for example, in good standing with the tax authorities? Uh, has it been audited in the past, etc.? Uh, also, where does organization operate? What are the target markets? For example, an organization is selling coffee sourced directly from African farmers and uh, sold in the European market under special brand and under special, uh, under special uh, traceability conditions. Uh, what is the CFC financing? Concisely, concise summary. So where will the organization, where will the project use CFC financing? Uh, that's also literally a couple of sentences that financing will be used to improve the processing of coffee at the farmer level to meet the quality standards of the European market, for example. Uh, request uh, for financing. Uh, this is uh, number slide number 15, and I believe I have to uh, pass the floor to my colleague. So, uh, uh, Mr. Nikolaus Kromer. Yeah, thank you very much, Andre. Also from me, a good day, good evening to you all, and and thank you for your for your interest. Um, yeah, re uh, request for financing. That is chapter number two in our template. And and before I I go into the individual loan products that that we have on offer that can be requested here a few general things the cfc share of financing does not exceed 50 percent please make sure that you do not request for your project or the investment that you do uh, um, an amount that that uh, is higher than 50 percent we need to see that uh, um, this is covered by other loans, by, by equity or by retained earnings or, or the like. So financing from other sources must be shown in the financial projections and we must find them somewhere in the financial statements. Otherwise we cannot accept. The normal term loan or the normal term of loan products that we offer is between three to five years. Um, there are exceptions. I will go uh, uh, and describe them in the next slide. The interest rate, and that's a very interesting question for many of you, is determined based on a risk profile. So what we do is that we usually take the base rate, and the base rate is the government lending rate of the country where the project is going to be implemented, and we take US dollar bond 
bond rates for that. On top of that, we usually put a risk margin. Now, also there are exceptions to it up and down, but at the uh, at an average, as a rule of thumb, you can expect that the interest rate will be between five and 10% per year. 10%, sometimes even higher for something that goes into the primary agricultural sector and 5% and sometimes lower um, uh, will be uh, investments that are heavily collateralized and, and have a high security. Equity financing, we do, but we only do where this is explicitly required. And at the moment, this is impact uh, investment funds where we do provide some funding occasionally. If we move to the next slide, Andre, if I can ask you to help out. The next slide provides you with an overview of our main forms or main loan products uh, that we offer. Uh, intermediary forms are always possible and we tailor nearly all of our loans. But you will see right on top uh, uh, term loans. That is a classic product for uh, uh, CAPEX investments. If you want to rehabilitate your oil mill or if you want to expand a cocoa plantation and you need funding for that, that is the way to go. Uh, we usually, as I mentioned earlier, have a, a term of three to five years for CAPEX loans, especially when you have perennial crops or something like that. We do go up to seven years. We do provide a grace periods, but only if it's really warranted and needed. We go further down, you see trade finance. That is actually our most popular product uh, uh, that ranges from pure trade finance against shipment documentations in the port, but it can extend up to the point where we do provide finance against the purchase order of an ultimate off-taker. So the processor can go out in the field in Africa and Latin America and pre-finance input for farmers, which then grow um, a fruit or, or a commodity which then is being processed is then being shipped and then the supermarket in, in, in Germany or, or in France takes another 60 days until to repay. So that then goes into, into working capital or the like finance. Standard structure I mentioned it, is that we do uh, uh, do this against purchase order and we usually have a tripartite agreement. That, so that means it's not only you and us, but it's also the ultimate off taker that joins that, that agreement. That is, uh, sounds more difficult and complicated than it is. Many, many of those off takers, be it supermarket or processors in Europe or, or, or in the US, are willing to do that. The longer the cash cycle takes, the more you need to expect that we ask on, on uh, uh, securities yeah? uh, that can be inventory receivables or, or, or guarantees. Yeah, as an example, I, I have given it, uh, uh, we, we have a company that, that collects mangoes in Mali uh, and then uh, uh, processes them into puree and then waits until the container full load is there and then ships it to Europe. And, and then after 120, after 130 days, the funding is then being paid to us. We take our share and then transfer the, the outstanding amount back to the company. Next in line, equity stake, I, I already mentioned it. Uh, uh, we can do it, but we so far have not invested into equity of single companies. Yeah, it, it simply absorbs too much capacity because we, if we would do so, we would like to become an active investor. So what we occasionally do is that we invest in equity and impact investing funds. Yeah, so if there is an interesting proposition, we always listen but we uh, usually only invest with relatively small ticket sizes. You know that you see development impact bonds. Yeah, what's behind this? Uh, uh, the name sometimes is a little bit mis misleading. Uh, we find this is of great strategic interest to us. Uh, what is meant here really is that uh, an implementing partner that can be an NGO or, or any other private company claims to produce a certain um, uh, quantifiable amount of development impact. Yeah, with the implementation of a technical assistance project. In our case, that should be related to smallholders and, and agriculture value chain. And on the other hand, you have a sponsor who is in principle willing to pay um, for that impact, yeah, but only if uh, and to the amount that it is being delivered. So what the CFC offers is to be the investor in the middle. Yeah, uh, uh, We pre-finance the project if we're convinced that it can work and we take the risk of non-performance yeah, of the, of the NGO. And if there's going to be a lot of impact, 
then we get our money back and we get a premium on top. And if there is less, then we lose out. And uh, we believe that this model uh, has a future because sponsors do no longer uh, really want to pay uh, for something in advance uh, against a claim that will either materialize or not, but, uh, uh, but they want to pay for what they get. So I, I read there's also a link on, on our website and for a live example of that might be a bit complicated. Finally, we have fast track projects. These are proposals with a smaller ticket size and, and can be submitted under a, a procedure that uh, uh, speeds up the process un, until disbursement. And uh, it can, in exceptional cases, also be a grant. But I need to do a little bit of an expectation management here. Uh, in recent years, the success rate of, of uh, projects submitted um, under this uh, has been minimal. Uh, projects need to be highly innovative. Yeah, they need to be of strategic importance for the CFC and they need to have substantial additionality. If we now turn the page, um, next slide, you'll see a screenshot of the proposal. So if you want a loan on the left-hand side, you select the type of the loan, you tick the box, then you go to the amount, you indicate the amount, use of funds very briefly, what is it that I want? I want um, equipment, machinery, or plantation uh, expansion, the tenor, you put in the expected tenor and you give an indication of the collateral that you could forward. forward. Uh, for the tenor, you see for trade finance and working capital, 12 to 18 months. Now that is true that we want, uh, want to, to uh, see the money back after a certain amount of time, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to renew it. So uh, uh, these contracts, if we agree to, to enter into a trade finance partnership with you, uh, are usually for five years. So you pay the money back to us and you'll get it back for the next season for up to five years. Next slide, you see the same, uh, it's an, a screenshot for equity stake. You, you tick the boxes where applicable, you put in the figures and also the share. You can see we wouldn't under no circumstances take more than 49% of shares. Same with the next slide. And that is for fast track. If we now move to the next slide three, you see that's the next chapter of the template, management and operations. So. What we want to know here, yeah? under 3.1, we want to know about management and ownership. The key question regarding ownership that we would like to have answered in the proposal, who are the shareholders? Who are the owners? Are there any other ultimate beneficiary owners? And, and is the company part of a holding um, or, or does it have sister companies? That What is the context? Yeah, Please be transparent in that. What we also would like to know, is, is there a board? Or how is the governance structure? Who sits on the board and why? So very crisp and clear. Three, yeah. Uh, oh, maybe for the management. Obviously, for the management, we would like to have CVs, yeah. Uh, if you have, and and we like to have the names, and and we like to see, okay, what do they bring? What do does each individual management member uh, bring to the table? Are there complementary skills and expertise? Yeah. So let me move to three two. That's the current business model, uh, and that is where many applicants have difficulties because. Mindset is already in the future, but you have to expect that we know nothing about your, your company as it is right now, as it is today. So please start with describing that you, this is company X and that produces uh, products uh, uh, Y and Z or processes it and for, for export or for what's it, to XYZ countries. Yeah, It's really that simple. Then we would not want to know briefly where do you source from? Yeah, What processing steps are you engaged with? Uh, when have you been established? Where are you located? Uh, who are your target customers? How many employees do you have full-time, part-time? What are your sales and production volumes? And, and, and what is your capacity for, for production and processing? Our project managers here are experienced enough from, from these kind of goalposts that we get to, to sort of visualize, okay, what company are we dealing with? Yeah, but we need it. Yeah, uh, so we get a good high-level understanding what you do how you do it and at what size level you do it. Yeah? And in many proposals, we have difficulties to interpret the business case yeah? and, and especially with whom we are dealing. That again, does not have to be long, but please be concise. And if you have quantifiable figures, provide them. We move to slide, next slide. That would be the next chapter already, market opportunity. So, the other headline would be what is around you and how 
does your company fit in there? We want to know in what market you are on the 4-1. Is it competitive with a lot of, lot of pressure yeah? uh, or are you differentiated or, or, or even to an extent that you fill a niche where, where you are the only provider of, that, of that, uh, these goods or services? Do you compete on price? Uh, do you compete on quality or, or, or not at all because you have such a unique selling proposition of your product that, that you are free to grow? Yeah. Do you have one more than one product and when, what's your revenue generator? These are the key things that we would like to know. One other key information under 4.1, what we would like to know is how do you currently secure your supply? Is it from small holders? Yeah? Is it from spot markets? Is it with long-term contracts? Uh, are you even integrated backwards uh, uh, with your own farm or, or, or production facilities? It's of great interest for us because uh, uh, this is usually where the social impact lies and that's where we're interested in. And then who are your main off takers? Yeah? And, and how do you market your product? How do you ship? Yeah? What's your relationship with your off takers? Do you have a few off takers that you have been dealing with for a number of years with long-term contracts or do you go to a spot market? Do you trade at arm's length? What are the barriers? of entry into your market? Is it difficult for a competitor to enter the market or, or is it, is it, would it be really, really uh, uh, complicated for another uh, company to enter the market that you are in? Last but not least, a list, who are your main competitors? What are the names? And, and you provide some basic information what, what the size and of, that, of that competitor would be. Any other macro level information also be good to be in there, yeah? Are there any legal issues in the sector, any environmental issues, specific political issues, yeah? We all know, for example, maize is a political crop. Technological is issues, does your industry in, in which you are in uh, expect any game, technological game changes to, to enter into the future? Are you already in possession of that, yeah? Are there laws that prohibit export? Is there new te technologies that, that would make others obsolete or the like? Really, really the, the, the big picture. Uh, and if there's anything, please put it in there. Under 4.2, that would be key strengths of the business model. Here, we would really like to invite you to express in a few sentences, what is it that makes you better than your competitors? Yeah? Where do you see your strength? Be it be your staff, be it that you're very efficient, that you have a new, unique product, that you have price leadership, that your customer relations are, are, are exceptionally good. Please let us know. On the other side, on the 4.3, please also be very honest uh, uh, about the weaknesses. Yeah, we will, we will ask you in the proposal, where is where are your weakest points? Yeah? Where do you see you need to do better? Where do you need to try to work out uh, uh, in that, that uh, it, it problems need to be solved? Please put it there. Yeah, we can take it. We know that, that no, no uh, enterprise, no business is spotless and there are always problems. Okay, moving to the next slide. That would be chapter five in, in the proposal template. Now that we have, or that we ask you a lot of questions about the status quo, how your business is, we, we now sort of turn to the future. Yeah? And, and 5.1 is, is basically taking or based on what you have described in the previous chapter on where your business stand. We want to know what your plans are with CFC funding and other funding. How will your business look like after you have invested with CFC fund, funds? Uh, where will the effects be? What changes will take place? Yeah? Will you be vertically uh, backwards integrated? Will you increase your capacity? Will you diversify your product range? Will you differentiate? Will you move into another country? Yeah? And will you improve your quality? These are the things that, that we would like to know. Under 5.2, also, we would like to know, okay, how does your customer base change? Yeah? Uh, will you attract new customers? Yeah? Will you enter new markets with new products or just deepen existing markets that you are in? Yeah? Will there be a change in distribution channel? Will you go from informal to formal marketing or markets? Will you, different, uh, uh, will you go into other export countries? Uh, and in that context, one question that's very important, uh, maybe you put it under there, is what currency will you be selling? Under 5.3, because we see that's very important, the supply side, 
we would like to know what is it for supply that, that you require, also in view of having, under most circumstances, expanded or changed the business. Yeah? How will you secure assumed higher supply requirements? Will you diversify sourcing? Yeah? Will you become engaged with outgrowers? Will you import? Are there substitutes to the raw materials that, that, that you usually require? How is this associated with risk? Yeah? How will you structure your supply? Will you do it with contracts? Will you do it at arm's length? Are you going to have long-term contracts? How is the supply chain organized? Is it organized? Is it disorganized? Yeah. Will you will that raw material supply be from the local markets or, or be sourced from the world market? These are all things we are interested in. Under 5.4, we would like to know about any changes in, in your production or your processing process. Yeah. And, and uh, one big perspective is, do you add additional value through adding uh, or, or improving the, the, the processing steps. Yeah? Are you becoming a traceable or organic certified uh, uh, or uh, will you have other um, certifications that, that, that will improve uh, or add value to, to your product? That is what we would like to know. The other aspect is, okay, what's going to change uh, in, in your processes? Uh, will you need more or other skills or other skills staff yeah uh, will the new processing technology be, be very different or, or be similar uh, can you get training can your staff get training yeah and is the risk of, of failure for the technology high or, or is it low yeah is it high touch is it low touch and last but not least something that we're always interested in do you have stable access to electricity or any other sources uh, of, st of stable energy yeah and five five, the last one and in that chapter is is we would like to really like to know if if you plan to apply any innovation alongside the new in, investment that you make. Yeah? Will 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 you, for example, uh, uh, introduce a digital enterprise uh, resource planning system? Yeah, or will you start to engage with blockchain blockchain certification? Traceability, I've mentioned. Will you become organic? Will you start with carbon certificate training or with renewable energy? Or, or very, yeah, say le very much less spectacular. Are, are you going to be the first business that, that tries to integrate the peanut value chain in, in your country? That for us is also an innovation. Okay, before we uh, turn to development impact and, and I hand over to Andre uh, in, in general, uh, kindly be as concise as possible and try to underline all the information or m m the information that you can with quantitative figures wherever this is possible yeah for yields production level staff yeah try to avoid what we would call fogging yeah or or, or and do not go for 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 data and, and and information dumping that will only confuse us and and it will not make the proposal any better we are fully aware that there's no business in this world which is perfect yeah do not be afraid of self highlighting your deficiencies and the possible risks of of your business yeah at the proposal stage, and that is that stage, we need to get a clear high-level picture of your business to see if the business can be sustainable. Yeah, And that is the basis for what we are really aiming for, and that is social or impact, a uh, development impact, which for us then becomes sustainable impact. Okay, I believe the next slide then is for Andre again. That'll be slide number six. Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Nikolaus. Uh, also, uh, thank you very much uh, for the questions in the chat box. Uh, we were trying to respond to some of those. Uh, we note the suggestion to have a WhatsApp group. Uh, I, if we ever decide to set up a WhatsApp group, then we will announce that uh, via mailing list and on the CFC Facebook page, you are encouraged to subscribe to CFC Facebook and LinkedIn pages. Uh, other questions, I think we will uh, respond, here, respond a bit uh, later on the substance. So let me quickly conclude uh, the application form by going through the development impact section. We said in the very beginning that the CFC positions itself as an impact investor. In general, impact investors are those who promised to report, who promised to report both the financial results and sustainable development results. 
So the results of each project need to be understandable, not only in financial terms, but also in terms of sustainable development. So section 6.1. Uh, what will the project achieve in terms of impact? For example, a uh, cassava project will create a thousand new permanent jobs uh, producing, uh, harvesting and processing cassava for the domestic markets. Uh, innovation, what's new about the project? For example, we introduce a new uh, chipping machine that will make processing cassava while maintaining its quality more effective and that makes cassava suitable for industrial uh, starch applications in the country and for exports. Uh, additionality, we will implement this project hand in hand with the uh, development project of the Food and Agriculture Organization or in contact with the local uh, farmer cooperative union that will allow us to reach out to smallholder farmers who will supply cassava to our processing facility. So that's targeted impact, that's targeted innovation. Impact in terms of sustainable development goals, we all heard about them, I hope by now. I will say a few more words about it in the next slide. Uh, poverty profile of the beneficiaries, we need to understand uh, who are the people who will benefit from the, from the project. Not in, not in general words, but for example, the, the community of uh, Ashaninka in the Peruvian Amazon has little access to uh, any, uh, any uh, formal financial system. So production of marketable cocoa by this community connects them to the global trade and makes them the beneficiary of high demand for specialty uh, cocoa products uh, produced by traceable uh, ways and uh, social and environmental risks. Uh, every project uh, in the commodity sector takes something out of the environment and also imposes something on the local community. So uh, we need to be open that projects may create social and environmental risks, for example, excess use of water. And we need to see that those risks can be mitigated. So uh, I will say a few words, a few more words about it later. So uh, sustainable development goals, the CFC has uh, five core sustainable development goals. Actually, now we are also including uh, sustainable goal number 13, climate change, as another core sustainable development goal. And we uh, are asking all projects to assess what they achieve in the context of sustainable development goals one, two, five, eight, ten, and now 13. Uh, there is a template in the downloadable Excel spreadsheet where you can see the details and instructions on how to complete the specific indicators or the specific assessment on uh, the impacts of the project on sustainable development goals. It sounds complicated. Uh, on a deeper level, it is. But at the level of a small scale projects like the CFC finances, we simply need to see, for example, no property, the income of the target population will increase by 50% over five years due to the implementation of project. That's the answer that we're looking for. Uh, number five, gender equality. The uh, project will involve at least 50% women entrepreneurs in delivering the, pro the products to the market and so on. Our poverty profile of the beneficiary, there's just a few examples uh, that you can see also in the application form that you can also see in the instructions for the application form. Uh, example, we need an indication. So what's the average GDP per capita in the country and what's the, what's the levels of income in the target population group that makes them particularly vulnerable even in the context of the country and so on. The involvement of any vulnerable groups counts as a big plus. So if a coffee project in Uganda, for example, and that's a real uh, example, if it involves uh, unemployed youth to be trained in processing coffee uh, in, in the processing facilities that creates uh, youth working places, and that is a big plus uh, for the project. And on the sustainable and environmental impacts, uh, we expect the CFC projects to be at least environment neutral. So any negative impact needs to be mitigated. 
if the project, for example, through reforestation or agroforestry, achieves a positive environmental impact, that's a plus, please mention it. Uh, the CFC employs a special uh, social and environmental risk management system, SIMS, which uh, is uh, the, uh, de developed on the basis of standards uh, by the International Labour Organization that's common among international organizations. And we will apply the checklists uh, of our uh, social and environmental risk management system to the projects. You will see the information that you need to supply in the Excel uh, worksheets that can be downloaded. A few words about the impact indicators. Uh, the CFC follows the uh, IRIS model, that's impact uh, reporting standards. Of, uh, uh, they, they are developing by the Global Impact Investment Network, the GIN. You can have a look uh, at the web address indicated. Uh, there are literally thousands, tens of thousands of impact indicators in the IRIS uh, taxonomy. Uh, you only need to supply a few of those. Uh, you, the use of IRIS allows us to be comparable, allows us to build a complete picture of the CFC operations, comparing different projects uh, on, different, uh, on uh, different measures and different dimensions, and also reporting to the international community what our projects are achieving. Uh, if you do have questions on those, again, uh, write to us, but Excel uh, template contains examples of IRIS indicators. The simplest one, the, the easiest one to complete, which you can use to meet our requirements. So uh, we are only left with a few sections, the financial performance and all the rest of the information. So I'm pleased to hand over the floor back to Nikolaus to talk about the financial performance. And shortly after that, we will proceed to uh, Q&A. In the meantime, we'll try to I will try to answer a few questions in the chat box. Uh, Nikolaus, over to you. Yeah, if we move over to the next slide, there will be chapter seven. So uh, alongside the narrative business case and, and, and a market uh, and management analysis, we would of course also like to assess the financial uh, strength and also the performance of, of your business. And we do that in chapter seven. In principle, we, we will ask you, or we ask you to fill in two Excel sheets, yeah, uh, two templates, which can be found on, on our website and which I actually will show after this slide. One is the balance sheet, it doesn't come as a surprise. The other one is the profit and loss statement, also not. yeah, And, and we require with this, uh, you to fill in the historic financial statements, yeah, the past financial figures of the last three years, and then do a forecast for the next couple of years. Um, yeah, uh, this is a very simple task, but but uh, we uh, I just want to stress here that we have to look at these figures in a structured manner, and and we need to grasp the general notion of where your business stands and goes very quickly, and and that is why we have pre-structured uh, uh, templates, Excel templates. And that is why we kindly ask you not to amend the templates, rather try to make your figures fit into that structure. And that, that will make life much easier for us. And, and when you do that, please try to ensure that, that uh, you are providing us with a true and fair view of your financials. It will save us a lot of work, yeah, if we don't have to find out at a later stage when we look at your audited financial statements that these figures are, are not coherent and and then we we would have to stop it there yeah and and that that is that is of no use neither for us nor for you yeah again uh, we know that there's hardly any business that comes with a, a, a shiny super solid balance sheet uh, regular high net profits and and tons of free cash yeah so uh, uh, be truthful we can take it in the proposal you do have the chance of, of commenting on the tables and also on providing us with insights and explanations. If there are, is the oddball figure in, in there uh, that we can observe, uh, observe uh, you have the opportunity to explain why. Uh, if there has been an extraordinary event or, or certain things like that, we would like to know. For the projections under 7.2, yeah, please provide us with the main assumptions. We would like to know why is it that that uh, that you, for example, would we find very often you project 
a, a steep hockey stick like uh, growth yeah we need to know on what basis do you make this assumption and and form us on the uh, inform us on the assumed prices volumes of and and various products that, that you're selling so we understand and we can we can see okay is that plausible or not in the seven three uh, we would like to know uh, uh, your existing other finance providers yeah what banks or what funds are, are um uh, are you in contact with or, or have you borrowed money and what type of funding have you received and 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 the amount that will provide us with information that is valuable for us also we would like to know what the additionality of cfc financing is yeah be it that you do simply do not find a local bank that provides you with with finance for your uh, project, yeah, that the interest rates are prohibitive, or that the loan product is simply not available. That's what we usually find, for example, with trade finance. Yeah. Finally, under seven four, we ask you to risk transparently the main risks that you are facing and and that you might face, yeah, when you grow with CFC funding. Again, be open and transparent no business in this world that it comes without any risks yeah and we know that anything related to agriculture in the wider sense uh, is very risky yeah so whatever you write there be assured that that we can take um in the next slide as i said you see a uh, screenshot of the profit and loss statement that we would like to see what is important is that we ask you to provide this in us dollars yeah um, please uh, uh, let us know what exchange rate you're using and then put it in us dollars you see uh, on the top left first we start with a historical uh, uh, pnl then we go into the current financial year if you have any management accounts the latest ones please put them in and then we turn to the future and again please stick to the lines that that we have provided to us if you go to the next slide, it's the same thing with the balance sheet. Also here, kindly stick to US dollars and uh, do not uh, uh, amend the model. That brings me to chapter eight. Very quickly, uh, there um, on the next slide, there you can see, uh, and you have a bit of a checklist uh, where you can see, okay, what other documents, supporting documents is mandatorily required and what is recommended on the left hand side you see okay we need to see audited financial statements of of the uh, three financial years preceding yeah that is a rule if you only have two uh be it but uh, usually we we insist on it yeah also we would like to have at least some robust financial projections yeah where do you see business going in the future Impact indicators, yeah. Uh, as Andreas mentioned, there is a template Excel spreadsheet, yeah. And we would like to see some proof that your company is regis registered. So please send copies of the company registration. And then we would like to have, if if your company is part of a holding or or with sister companies or whatever, please provide us with a group chart. That's usually very helpful. Highly recommended on the right hand side. If you have a business plan, send it, yeah. If you have management organizational charts, please send them. CVs, I have mentioned before, please send. If you have articles of association at hand, please send them to us. And also if you have any environmental and social impact assessment that's been done for other, other lenders or whatever, uh, even if they are a few years old, if you have them, please send them. Okay, that makes me go hand it over to Andre again. Right, uh, so we're almost done with the application form. Uh, I don't think I need to spend much time on the key details of the organization. That's uh, that's very clear. Uh, we need to know again. We need to know who who the company behind the project is. If there's a registration number, please uh, mention the registration number. If there's a website, please mention the website. And of course, in which country this is incorporated. Uh, there may be a question if the company is incorporated in a non-member countries. We are interested. Uh, it's it's a complicated question, but we are interested that the CFC resources are used for activities in CFC member countries. So there is no blanket answer. What happens if the country is incorporated in a non-member country? Uh, we need to see the details about it. Uh, finally, uh, 
please uh, do not forget to complete the affirmations on the application form. That uh, the person submitting the form is authorized to represent the organization. We will check that at due diligence stage. That the country where activities, where the funds will be used, that this is a member country of the CFC, that there is commitment to observe a UN Global Compact, uh, that there is no pending litigation, pending uh, pending uh, claims on the on the applicant, that the information is true and complete, and in principle, please indicate that you understand that we will share the information in the application form with our governing bodies for the purpose of decision making. If any information is sensitive, please indicate this clearly so we can uh, work out how to keep this safe. So uh, this complete concludes the application form and uh, there will be a questionnaire sent to uh, everyone after this uh, webinar asking about your views, asking how you found out about the proposal. Now is the question time. I will be part of that. And I will be part of that because it's really something that's so amazing. And uh, the other thing is that I do not understand well. Uh, you talk about uh, things concerning investment and uh, our association is focused on startable activities, community services. So we don't focus on like uh, kind of investments. I don't know how will we apply for that or it is only for companies who are doing investments so i really know like a more clarification on that thank you yes okay uh thank you very much uh uh it's uh difficult uh, to understand all the details uh by voice but uh in general uh, the CFC acts in the framework of impact investment. Uh, that means that the CFC expects a viable, sustainable economic model to be behind the project so that the results achieved in the project will be sustained by the operation itself and without further CFC involvement. Grant financing does not qualify for that because grants are not considered to be sustainable. Uh, so a viable operational model, which can sustain itself after the ending of CFC financing is a requirement in the impact investing framework. And uh, this, this is what we will expect. Thank you. So I see uh, two flags up. First, uh, Yusuf uh, Valube. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon to you all, depending on where you are. Uh, thank you for this presentation, it was very informative. I just have one question. I've looked at Excel, specifically the impact indicators, and I'm still lost on how you expect us to complete this, the years 2022, to 2025, if you give a five-year forecast, what figures from IRIS do you expect or do you want us to put in this? Because it's not clear. So if you'd allow, perhaps you'd uh, show us a demonstration or maybe uh, how it will be completed with some basic examples. Thank you. Thank you for this question. Uh, this, uh, this will be uh, difficult to show right now uh, because as I said, iris indicators, there are lots of those. There are examples of iris indicators in the spreadsheet where you can use simple numbers like the number of people employed, I believe, the number of uh, hectares cultivated if the, pro if the project is agricultural where you can give the numbers currently known to you and expected as the result of implementation of the projects. Uh, if you have a more specific question, then I would advise you to write uh, to, uh, to the open call address where our impact uh, strategy officer will be able to understand you better or indicate this in your application form that, uh, that these, these numbers are of course completed to the best of uh, current understanding. If uh, there's something uh, that's not clear, 
but the rest of the operational model of the project is sound, then we will come back to you to clarify. That's the best I can answer at this stage. Thank you. And uh, uh, Priska uh, Besi Gome. Uh, please go ahead, ma'am. Okay, hi everyone. Thank you so much for this presentation. I just have one question. Uh, if I'm operating uh, what seems like a microfinance, but I work with an association or a group of smallholder farmers who need, basically they just need input to help them get on their feet because you know they've been affected by what has happened to the economies recently. Would I qualify because I'm not directly dealing with um, with the with farming, but I'm dealing with the people. So I I facilitate them, provide inputs and train so that you know in the long run, in the short, after a season or two, they are able to in return support the community and others. Would that be something plausible for CFC? Thank you. Uh, can I ask uh, Nicholas to? Uh say something uh, microfinance is is uh, is a known area where in principle we operate but there, there will be detailed questions there nicholas yeah uh, uh, and thank you um yeah it's it's difficult with with the information that that you have provided but but maybe l let me put it this way what what our main target uh, are small and medium sized enterprises along agricultural value chains yeah that are at least in in growth stage that that means we need to be sure that they have a revenue generating business model and that they are either already profitable or they will be profitable very soon and which can be or which is visible from the profit and loss account and 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 from the balance sheet so if you can answer these questions for yourself with yes 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 and yes uh, then, then I think it's worthwhile submitting. But uh, uh, from what you have said, the, the notion is, uh, I think that that this is too small, and it is not really based on 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 a commercial uh, um, a business case. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will take a pause, taking questions from the floor. I see the hand up, but we had a number of questions uh, in the chat box. So I will quickly go through those questions then. A uh, general question uh, from a forestry consultancy business in uh, Holland. Uh, by all means, please, uh, if, uh, if, you, if anybody is interested in the forestry sector, please, uh, con please make contact and see if uh, there is mutual interest. Uh, working capital uh, go to the startup costs. They, okay, they, there is a possibility for CFC to provide working capital. The issue with a startup is that many startups do not have a proven operational model and that would make them ineligible. Uh, the rest uh, will uh, depend on the details of the proposal. Cassava uh, and cassava farmers are definitely eligible. Uh, beauty pro products uh, from the land are eligible. Animal production is eligible. Ethanol for industrial use, so we'll have to see the details. Uh, thank you for information about, uh, about where you found it. Uh, Colombia is a member country, Curaçao is not, but I believe uh, there's a cross-border trading issue. So uh, there may, if it's of benefit to Colombia, then this, uh, then this will be suitable. Uh, for microfinance institution, institutes, uh, should the proposal would be specific to a particular area, targeted population, business, or general financing to micro, uh, microfinance uh, borrowers with this product line in compliance with the ESMS uh, standards? So should the, should the proposal be compliant with the ESMS standards? Uh, I cannot say uh, very specifically, uh, we need to see the details. In principle, we require compliance with the applicable standards. I cannot say if uh, which standards are applicable without knowing the details of the case. Uh, if most of the last two years spent in uh, construction of the facility under COVID-19 uh, lockdowns, uh, so uh, 
again, uh, is there a viable operational model that can take off with the CFC financing? If yes, then, uh, then uh, the proposal is interesting. Uh, the recording will be shared uh, on the CFC website. Uh, joint venture uh, certainly will look at the entire, entire value chain. So I could give you a few examples of producer process operations that, uh, that were successful. Uh, Cocoa and Plantain are eligible. Uh, submission deadline, all the proposals that we received by 15 April, that's two weeks from now, will be considered in the current operational cycle. All the proposals that we receive after that will be considered in the next operational uh, cycle. Uh, last, uh, what is the meaning of the last three years given the uh, disruption of the pandemic? That's an interesting question, but again, we need to understand that uh, pr the proposal has a sound operational model behind it. Uh, mushrooms are perfectly suitable, perfectly eligible to apply. Mushroom farms are an interesting line of business. Uh, cash pro, pro, pro projects are entirely eligible. I believe also I gave an example of one a cash pro project that we have seen in the past. So uh, mangoes uh, in Kenya uh, are eligible. I, I believe we have man mango pro projects uh, in other regions. So mangoes are perfectly eligible as well. Uh, Nikolaus, uh, would you say a few words about rice in Ghana? Uh, there's a question in the chat box about eligibility of rice in Ghana. Or better, well, up to you. Well, yeah, yeah. In Basically, principle, the answer is yes. Yeah, the, the answer is yes. Uh, our experience with a commercial rice farm in, in Ghana at an earlier stage was not, not so encouraging, but uh, if you have a sound case, by all means, please, please submit. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, now, uh, there's a question, suggestion on WhatsApp. So I'm advising, uh, because this meeting is basically open, so I'm advising uh, everybody not to share the telephone numbers because we cannot guarantee your privacy if it's uh, shared here. If we decide to establish a group, it will in all likelihood not be WhatsApp for technical reasons. Uh, do subscribe to our Facebook and LinkedIn web pages. Uh, where we will make all those announcements and where all this information is uh, is available. So uh, maybe my colleagues uh, can post a link to the CFC uh, LinkedIn and Facebook pages uh, where you can follow the developments in the CFC. Now, uh, WhatsApp, the limit for groups uh, used to be about a thousand people. And just for this webinar, we had uh, about 1,500 uh, requests for participation. So WhatsApp for technical reasons will not work. Uh, and we're currently using uh, Facebook and LinkedIn for, uh, uh, for communication. Uh, right, uh, please send a link. Does financing cover brick and mortar equi uh, capital equipment and working capital? I guess the gen general answer is it's possible. Uh, the specific answer depends on the specific details. So uh, I hope that does it. Uh, now, I would like to give the floor to the uh, people waiting with the hand up. Uh, Mr. Hunter, Farmer's Pride, please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much uh, to all uh, CFRC officials who are here. And uh, thank you for the presentation that you've done. Uh, I am representing an organization called Farmers Pride. We are working in 40 countries where we are doing agriculture activities. And uh, one of our main focuses is on agro, agroforestry and uh, looking at uh, Moringa. Is it something that can be considered for, for funding by CFC? Uh, the short answer is yes. Agroforestry is uh, is an interesting uh, area. Uh, it's it's not easy. It's not uh, simple, but we can so we will be able to look at the details. It is entirely eligible. Uh, we may have lost my colleague uh, for a moment. So uh, yeah, I I would pass the floor to him, but he's not currently in the meeting room, so he will rejoin in a moment. I am uh, Andre. Can you hear me? Oh yes, yes, you back, you back. So agro agroforestry, I just said that it's uh, eligible and uh, perfectly interesting for the CFC. Uh, 
which is which is correct but again ask yourself uh, is is this a viable commercial business case that if you can answer the same question to yourself yes then then we would be interested to hear yeah mm -hmm. yes thank, thank you. you uh can i pass the floor to mr uh, bennett Beretta? Ah, we have, uh, I believe we have lost uh, Mr. Bennett. So, uh, Mrs. Uh, Priska Besingome. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, greetings from Kampala. Uh, basically, my question is, uh, from the explanations uh, from Mr. Kulship, he, he gave us uh, a process which had the time you submit the proposal, uh, the steps uh, which it takes uh, to get the response. Uh, basically, could you uh, give us an estimate if I um, submit a proposal, uh, for example, the, the next coming month, how long can I get the response? Just an estimate on that, because I think there are so many levels in between there, uh, which the proposal has to go through uh, before uh, the response is given back. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for the question. So as I said, we're trying to keep it as quick as possible. Uh, for fast uh, for fast track project proposals, uh, we have been able to uh, execute uh, within within about six weeks. Okay, but for that, the proposal must be complete, and all the questions will have to be answered uh, quickly and effectively. And then the fast track procedure that's below 300,000 allows us to process proposals uh, pretty fast. Now, uh, the, so the, the CFC project cycle is aligned with the CFC governing bodies and the executive board outside fast track procedure meets twice a year in October and in uh, April. So the coming executive board in April that's uh, three weeks from now, will decide on the projects that we received last October. And the projects that we receive now will be decided by the executive board in October. So uh, our experience is that after the decision by the executive board, again, uh, the fastest we did was, a, was within the few weeks when the project proposal was complete and when all the, um, all the questions have been answered. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the cycle, that's the cycle. It's they to, to uh, we need the executive board to decide on any substantive request for financing outside the fast track. And the executive board needs the cycle of the open call to see complete and uh, suitable documentation on the proposal to be able to make a decision so uh thank you for this question that's uh, that's a continuing concern for us to decide as fast as possible but i promise you nobody in the same category as the common fund for commodities in the same category of financing will decide faster uh next question i see uh, oscar benjamin uh, please go ahead. Uh, sir, we cannot hear you. We need to, yeah. Yes, I want to get a little bit of a clarity. So um, uh, I'm from a company here, Global Limited. Uh, we have been um, working on the cocoa, organic cocoa value chain for about 15 years now. So we currently have over 5,000 farmers uh, producing up to 15,000 tons of uh, organic cocoa. Now, our focus has been to establish the entire value chain. Uh, we're currently on the 200 acres of land uh, with a, a chocolate factory established. And uh, we're working on a food processing factory basically to keep the farmers engaged beyond the cocoa season because our farmers grow other things uh, beyond cocoa. Uh, we're at 80% uh, state of completion of that uh, food processing factory, which would buy cassava, uh, plantain, bananas, and other things our farmers grow beyond cocoa. Uh, cassava starch has become something of interest in, uh, in the past year because um, 
in some of the communities that we operate in, there's so much cassava, uh, the specific one that the industry requires so much. So um, would your organization consider funding such a pro uh, project for an alternative livelihood for our farmers beyond the cocoa season uh, producing cassava starch? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you tempted me to get into the discussion of this particular operational model, of which uh, we happen to know more than, uh, uh, well, quite, quite enough, let's, uh, let's put it this way. We cannot answer you without the details of the proposal. Cassava starch, while being self-evident, is complicated for industrial users because it degrades very fast in the process of production. So the scale of production becomes a critical factor and the scale of production is generally difficult to achieve on economical scale on, on, uh, while maintaining the economics of the operation. But this is just the general consideration that I know exists. But the details of the operation, we, have, we, we will have to see. Nicholas, go ahead. Wow, thank you. Uh, and nevertheless, uh, uh, you, you, your <clears throat> small statement picked uh, a high number of boxes of, of issues that we are interested in. So uh, I, I would nevertheless in, encourage you to submit a proposal if it's about the complete business. Uh, when I mean it, it is about your, your organic cocoa business. And uh, uh, so if this is part of the business, I, I would like to encourage you to submit a proposal. I would be interested mm -hmm. to hear more about it. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Bennett Beretta. Uh, thank you very much. Are you, are you hearing me? Yes, we hear you. Yes. Yeah, uh, I'm representing a company called Carlos Uganda Limited in Uganda. And uh, we are dealing in projects uh, in vegetables and, uh, and fruits. So we are in the phase of expanding from uh, two hectares to 15 hectares, that will be phase one. Then uh, phase two will be expanding from that 15 hectares, then developing another section of fruits, so like has variety of avocado uh, for 50, 50 hectares, at least 50 hectares of avocado. But as for, for now, we have, uh, there is one company which, uh, accepted that accepted to finance that project uh, it's from Israel and then they requested us to conduct a, a, a detailed planning and that detailed planning uh, the company to, to conduct that must come from Israel to put it on an, an, on an international standard so we the challenge we are having is to get the finance company that uh, is requesting us to pay them $9,500 for a detailed planning for the start. And then after that, uh, after the detailed planning has been submitted, then uh, that company is going to, to finance 85% of the whole project. And then the 15% of the project it will be our our in our our input as canals. So we, we wanted to know whether CFC can support us on that uh, financing of the detailed planning. And then uh, after develop, after developing that bankable document, then we we see whether CFC will say that we in the bank did continue with the CFC or we go to that company in Israel, depending on how we will be uh, discovering very many avenues on the way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, it, it sounds like you're talking about the need for a TA grant to prepare the proposal for the, for a uh, strategic investor or for long-term uh, financier. Uh, yeah, it raises quite a number of questions. Uh, also that connects to a question uh, that's asked in the chat box, uh, can we give a grant? And the general answer is no, we cannot give a grant. 
Uh, there are a few exceptions, but none of those apply in uh, in uh, this in this group. Basically, you need to you need to be a UN agency to be able to ask for a grant. Uh, now, technical assistance. Uh, there is a number of uh, partnerships that we pursue on technical assistance. So there, I don't know, Nicholas, if you can, uh, if you want to say anything on this, uh, if we can look into the proposal or not. No, I, I think it is difficult. As, as with the CFC, we do not have any any funding available for technical assistance. Uh, so for, for that, I, I think you, you would need to to seek other sources. And uh, from what you have described, I think your business might be in a, in, in a slightly too early stage uh, for us to provide you with, with any loan financing, even though I think the, the business idea or business case itself is growing and, and processing vegetables and, and, and haughty products is something that we very, very frequently do. So uh, please stay tuned. Yeah, But I think at this stage, we might be the wrong address. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I see, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I see another flag up from uh, John Carl uh, Dunio. Yes. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Just a quick one. Um, if an organization checks most of the boxes, but for the fact that they are two years or not after three years, should we apply or not? I just want to know if that's a strict uh, requirement. Uh, we need uh, evidence that uh, the people behind the project have the necessary experience to be able to operate the project. So if the key persons in the project have enough experience, then please go ahead and do apply. I see my colleague uh, nodding. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Uh, yes, so these are the, the, the wonderful exceptions that we do. If, if, if uh, all other boxes ticked, uh, are, are really good and if you manage management team or the, or the sponsors key persons behind it do have ample experience in this uh, mm -hmm. uh, please do apply mm -hmm. yep. that's clear thank you yep. thank you uh yes uh so uh lamoro uh, emmanuel uh please go ahead and i see the question in the chat box uh, recycling of plastic waste into reusable uh, products uh, will probably fall outside our uh, priorities Please yes, go ahead. Uh, yes uh, thank you so much uh, for this wonderful program. It's really something that is so engaging and I love it so much uh, according to the uh, participation. However, I'm called Emmanuel Lomoro. I am a refugee who is based in BDBD settlement, Uganda. And uh, currently here, I'm the founder of a newly formed company called uh, Generous Designs Africa. We deal in recycling of plastic waste into reusable products to make uh, school bags, uh, school rulers, cups, pegs, and sat buttons. Uh, we, we, we engage the youths and their marginalized women mm -hmm. in the waste collection. And then after collecting the waste, they bring into our recycling center, then we process, and then we recycle those uh, waste to become into reusable products. So I was wondering if we can like get some assess, if there's some uh, fund uh, in order for for people to also to support Generous Designs Africa, because uh, I'm going to send for you the link of, of what we do and the website all, so that you can be able to follow what, what we are doing here in BDBD Refugee Settlement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, uh, thank you very much for the question. And uh, I would like to answer positively in the sense that uh, this, is, uh, this is the area and this is the issue that is addressed by multitudes of international developments and UN agencies. And there we have to act in the context of additionality. So the only support that we can provide would be additional and within the scope of our competence to the work otherwise done by other UN agencies, namely uh, specifically the UN Habitat, uh, the UN Refugee Agency, the International Organization for Migration, uh, the international, uh, the UN Capital Development Fund, and uh, specifically on the subject of cultural heritage is the specialty of UNESCO, that's UN Organization for Education, Science and Culture Development. So the, what, what you are mentioning sounds like a leg legitimate primary area of concern within the uh, mandates of UNESCO. And if they come or if uh, there's some kind of complementary activity 
in the field of commodities that the common fund can support, then this would certainly be, uh, be considered. <clears throat> so uh, I have two more hands, but uh, let me uh, give, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, give a few moments to, uh, to uh, the questions in the chat box. So uh, firstly, uh, which type of, what is uh, the limit of financing of one project? So uh, the minimum amount is 50,000, between 50,000 and to 300,000, as we said, it's, it can go through a fast track procedure. Uh, above 300,000, up to a million and a half, maybe up to 2 million, it can go through the regular procedure of the CFC. Beyond 2 million, there is a certain work in progress. So if you need over 2 million, if you need, let's say, 5 million US dollars from the CFC, uh, please do ask, please do submit. We have something in the works that will probably be able to uh, help us accommodate so those requests as well. Uh, for the co-financing, uh, there is no written agreement. Uh, that's one of the cases where we experience delays in project implementation. It is a matter of judgment. If you expect the uh, co-financing agreements to become concluded soon, then please go ahead and do apply. Uh, if uh, if co-financing is not forthcoming, we will not be able to provide, even if we give our approval, if there's no co confirmation of co-financing, then it will be pending for 24 months, and then the CFC will cancel its commitment. Uh, okay, this uh, we discussed. Uh, eligibility for non-reimbursable grants on the fast track option. Fast track is not for grants. Uh, in general, uh, it can be said that the CFC is not currently able to give grants. Okay, if the situation changes, we will announce that currently the CFC is in the area of impact investment. That implies reimbursable, recoverable uh, modes of financing, grant or equity part, sorry, uh, sorry uh, investments, loans, and equity partnerships are the main modes of our operation. Grants are not. Uh, payments, okay, so uh, that's uh, that I believe promotion. I would uh, not encourage the uh, uh, self-promotion to be placed in the chat box. I'm sorry, that's that's for me, Debbie Thomas. No, it, right. it's not. It's not um, self-promotion. We have projects that we want to submit. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Apologies, but our projects are obviously payment solutions, which we will um, submit individually. But if there are other people who need a payment solution to add on to their own, I'm happy to collaborate on that. That's what I was trying to say. But thank you. Yes, thank you very much for this clarification. And please do uh, do submit a proposal if uh, you think this uh, this works in the in the commodity value chain framework. Facilitation yes, payments is an interesting subject there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Eswatini uh, poultry production is eligible. Uh, Global Environment and Climate Conservation Initiative. I believe this uh, would be uh, best addressed by uh, sending a letter to the uh, open call a general address, and then we'll be able to address this in substance. Uh, general's designs, so we, uh, we have uh, discussed that. Organic cocoa value chain is uh, entirely suitable for the CFC. I believe the CFC has financed some projects in this regard. Uh, special incentives for women. It's, it's uh, the SDG five is gender equality and a project that uh, clearly states its contribution towards SDG five is certainly going to be, uh, well, it, it's a big plus for the project when it can demonstrate its impact on gender equality and women development. Uh, do we finance our construction of warehouses for post-harvest handling? Uh, we can finance our construction of warehouse as part of improvements in the commodity value chain, but the need for warehouses has to be clearly demonstrated. Uh, personally, I have certainly done my rounds uh, in warehouses in Africa and in Latin America and other places. And making an economically viable case for a warehouse 
is quite complicated. There's a number of initiative, uh, initiatives in this regard. So if you believe there's a viable case, by all means, uh, do, uh, do submit the proposal to us. Agro-processing uh, is uh, perfectly eligible. I think a good proportion of our projects concern agro-processing. Uh, right, so I see three hands up. Uh, okay, one hand has just disappeared. So uh, Ibrahim uh, Saini Nas Nassam, uh, please go ahead. Okay, good morning. Uh... My name is Sane Ibrahim from uh, Ghana, mm -hmm. uh, Northern region, Tamale. Uh, please, I want to find out, uh, we are into briquette production. We turn agricultural waste into smokeless charcoal. Our focus is uh, into uh, reducing, if not completely, uh, stopping the cutting down of trees in the name of producing charcoal. So we have uh, women that we put together, we train them on how to utilize their agricultural waste instead of burning it when they are done with harvesting of their produce from the farm. We look at the uh, rice husk, granite shells, corn husk, and the rest. We turn them into charcoal that they can sell to make money instead of depending on the trees uh, that is supposed to be protecting, uh, protecting the environment. So I want to find out if uh, we are qualified or we are, uh, our project is eligible to uh, source your funding and uh, basically how much can we get from you? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the question. So the short response is yes, it, it would be eligible. We have financed some activities on charcoal. The nearest uh, to Northern Ghana would be in Cameroon. Uh, also, uh, we are aware that uh, there are technical and financial issues in terms of making this into an economically viable case as always. So uh, please do uh, consider if you believe you have a, you have a case that can, can be uh, developed as a sustainable business. Uh, by all means, do apply, and I do hope that this will be successful. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Apollo Akala, uh, please go ahead. We cannot hear you. you uh, I think we have uh, lost. Uh, okay, so uh, Mr. Julius Mukeme is back with us. Uh, please uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm calling from uh, Bangladesh, that's Asia, and uh, I, I I haven't seen uh, any people from Asia, and I'm wondering whether I'm in the in the in the correct uh, session or that, whether there is another session dedicated for that. Uh, but uh, while uh, that is just a, a, a concern, personal concern. Uh, I am working with FAO and uh, we are working with the livestock producer groups, uh, helping them uh, to upgrade, upgrade their, uh, their, their processing, uh, uh, their, 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 their processing of their milk and also meat and uh, also eggs, basically within the value chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is, there are some uh, viable uh, producer groups that are getting into marketing and they have actually done some traditional uh, investments basically into in, in traditional uh, processing uh, technologies. And the question is, uh, such viable uh, livestock producer groups, uh, can FAO be able to support them to put, uh, to put um, uh, together a viable business proposal uh, for funding to the CFC for uh, potential funding? Uh, uh, the concise answer would be that FAO is certainly capable of uh, helping uh, the group to prepare a viable proposal for the CFC. We have uh, extensive, most extensive experience of working with the FAO in the livestock sector, specifically in Bangladesh, uh, you can still find traces of the milk project that the CFC has supported some years ago. 
you will also see videos of that project on the CFC website. So in principle, this session was intended for Asia. I cannot tell you right away what percentage of participants are from Asia, but Bangladesh is one of the member countries that's entirely eligible to submit project proposals. Uh, so if we can go ahead and then uh, uh, the, the ones that we've been able to uh, to identify as viable and uh, able to uh, make a business case, then we could uh, see how we can be able uh, to assist them to put up a proposal. And then maybe FAO could also uh, provide a technical assistance uh, to even accelerate uh, those business uh, proposals. By all means, please do. By all means, uh, we are again. We have uh, uh, long established contacts with the FAO, so uh, please feel free to reach out to us uh, through the FAO uh, intergovernmental groups on commodities. Uh, uh, Stephen Ampolo, uh, please go ahead. Yes, Ampolo. Yes. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, no. So sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, first, uh, I, I first, uh, Mr. Stin uh, Stan Mpolo. So, uh, Mr. Mpolo, please go ahead. Or Mrs. Mpolo. Um, thank you. Um, my name is Stin Polo. Um, I'm doing uh, in supporting the SMEs in a very area, particularly in uh, agricultural so sector. And I'm trying to help them to mobilize finance um, and put together uh, some partners. Um, the, I don't know if I can speak in French because uh, my first language uh, is French. I don't know. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't think this will work. I don't think okay. uh, this will okay. work. Let me do it. Don't, just, I want to know um, very, very quickly um what kind of uh, speculation cassava rice mango because i i, I apologize first because uh, i have a, a problem of uh, energy here it's just uh, is why i'm late uh, mm -hmm. we have a problem of electricity in cameroon so um, i want to know in in which uh, speculation are you financing cassava rice um and uh, well, cocoa, I know that's cocoa and coffee, but I want to know if cassava and um, and rice is eligible. The short answer is yes, it's, it's eligible. Again, once again, most, virtually all agricultural food products are eligible. Also, most of agricultural industrial products like rubber or palm oil, they're also eligible. Okay. Thank you. That is the... That is the first point. Uh, a second point is what type of organization are you financing individual uh, farmers or uh, what are calling a cooperative? Pharma is a cooperative. In uh, the, the, uh, the short answer to this question, it, well, it was part of the presentation. So we can finance any organization that can uh, use the CFC funds effectively to build an effective operational model that will be sustainable after the withdrawal of the CFC resources upon completion of the project. It can be a cooperative, it can be a large farmer, it can be a government agency, it can be uh, anybody okay. else, it can be an NGO. So it depends on the operational case, if yes. the operational case can be sustainable after the uh, end of the project. We want to build something that works after we're gone, we don't want to, uh, to uh, or our members rather do not want to engage in activities that disappear after the end of the project. Okay, okay, thank, thank, thank you. You know that question is, uh, what is it, what, what are the terms, the terms of uh, financing? Uh, the presentation will be made available to all people who okay. registered. This information is contained in it. I thank you. I have to give the floor to others who are waiting. In the okay, room. thank you. Thank you very thank much. much. Thank you. Very thank much. you very much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, so now, Mr. Apollo Akala, please go ahead. Yes. Yes, I'm Mr. Apollo Akala. Mr. Apollo Akala. Mm -hmm. I see. Hello? 
Uh, your sound is breaking yes. up very badly. It's difficult to understand. Maybe you can turn, turn off the video. Okay, okay. I'm thinking you are clear with me. Yes, uh, I'm asking about uh, the funding, the construction, especially in our area. Sure. My apologies, I have to interrupt you. We cannot understand. Uh, your, your sound is breaking up quite badly. Could I ask you to type the question okay. in, the chat, in the chat box? Okay. Or otherwise, you can try to ask your question by uh, turning off the video link. Maybe this will help. Um, we cannot uh, hear anything. Hello? Uh, yes, go ahead. Hello? Yes. I'm hearing, uh, are you hearing me? Uh, yes, we, we, hear you. we hear you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Lo from Kenya. We are running an amp that we need support from. I don't know if you support the companies of constructions, especially uh, the construction of the uh, management building, um, living, living capacity of the uh, of the town. So them here, so if you can uh, fund for them for their money for push their business on. So I don't know which channel are you using to, to, to provide or to cut the, the activities, especially example of my, our one party in Kenya, which we deal with the construction industry. Uh, thank you, but it, it was very difficult uh, that the sound was still quite bad. Uh, we are running off to, out of yes. time now, sir. So I will ask you to uh, write this question by email to the open call address of the CFC. That would be the best. Uh, what I could uh, gather, uh, I cannot answer the question right now. So I will okay. kindly ask, uh, Mr. Abdullah uh, Hamid, uh, Hamid, uh, to uh, and this will be the last question I take from the floor. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much for organizing this wonderful session. Uh, this is Abdullah Hamid Tire, the CEO of Global Environmental and Climate Conservation Initiative, Gechi, from Nigeria. Uh, this is organization for mainly youth. We are working with youth across the globe. We are present in more than 90 countries. Mainly youth, uh, they are working based on this, this initiative. So what I wanted to ask here, we have some projects that we need to support, like on capacity building on climate change and also uh, on, on agriculture. We want to improve our, our agricultural uh, products in most of the countries that we are working with this youth. As I'm seeing now, we have over 22,000 team members, those that they are working on creating awareness on climate change and the remaining things. And also this, uh, this, this initiative are the organizer of the Nigerian, the Nigerian Youth for Scop that's happened in the last few months back. So we want to have a spot for empowering this youth. So that, that is why I'm here. And I wanted to know on the process. Uh, in the last few months back, we used to train a youth in Nigeria with over 500 youth on uh, waste, in our collaboration with Bautis Reset, Bautis State Waste Recycle Plant. And this recycle plant train us and give us these skills. But we don't have financial that can support this youth to continue their activities as a self reliance. So that is why I'm here and wanted to know on how we can be financed and how we can collaborate with other agencies 
to do more on this as in to mitigate the effect of climate change. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this information. Uh, there is a lot of information or the, there's a lot of things that were mentioned and uh, we will have to see those things in the context of a specific commodity value chain where this, uh, where the mitigation of climate change would apply. So uh, if uh, I, I would suggest you write to the open call uh, general address indicating how the proposed activities in the context of climate change uh, would apply to a specific commodity value chain, then we would be able to uh, advise you uh, what, uh, what uh, and if and what could be suitable for CFC financing in it. Again, uh, climate change is a huge issue. There are literally dozens, if not hundreds, of international aid organizations and financiers involved in it. And uh, we have to act in the context of additionality, deriving the sustainable impact on climate change from financing changes in specific commodity value chains. So this would, be, this would always be the focus of our intervention, where in the commodity value chain can the CFC money be used to achieve sustainable development impact, which includes uh, climate change. Uh, so, okay. uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, for the questions. Uh, we will not, the time is up. We will not take any more questions uh, from the floor, uh, but I will quickly mention a few things uh, from the chat box. So uh, finance agro-processing, we answer, yes, we can. Uh, letters from the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, we do expect if uh, we do expect projects to indicate if they align to specific national development plans. That's a plus. So if your project is part of the national development program confirmed by a letter from the Ministry of Agriculture, then please certainly include it. Uh, farming plantain and cocoa at the same time. If there's a complementary operational model in both, then by all means, please, uh, please uh, include both. If the project focuses on one of the two, then focus the project, the proposal on one of the two. Uh, small and medium enterprises, if there is an email address where we can write to specify need to get financial, uh, the email address is in the chat box, uh, open call at commonfund.org. So we will uh, circulate uh, the, uh, the presentation to all people who are registered. So, and the recording will be available on the CFC website. Uh, governments, our local or regional governments are eligible. Again, our focus is not on the people who submit the proposal. We look at the substance of the proposal. So if the local government in a, is in a position to sign an agreement with the CFC, then so be it. So uh, the people behind the project proposal simply needs to be in a position to take the responsibility for borrowing the money from the CFC. So I believe this is all the questions. Again, the general address, uh, the general address is common fund is, is open call at common fund org. Uh, it's in the chat box. A uh, question from Malawi, if production of industrial hemp is uh, uh, authorized by the government, can the CFC finance it? Uh, my immediate response will be uh, probably not, uh, but uh, I cannot answer this question right now. So uh, we take note of the email addresses and uh, I believe this is all uh, the time we have for today. So I thank my colleagues. Uh, I thank all the participants for your patience with us. Uh, and thank you very much for the question, for the interest in the Common Fund for Commodities. Uh, you can send your questions to opencall at commonfund.org and somebody will reply to those. And uh, with that, I would like to close this uh, session. Uh, the recording will be available on the CFC website. Uh, the slides will be circulated to the email addresses. I thank you all and I wish you good health 
and I wish you all a very nice day. Thank you.